Where are you from, sir? Uh, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, South Memphis to be exact. Um, so that's where I live, you know, in my earlier part of life, all the way probably to the age of um, like around like 11 or 12. And then I moved to Georgia. Uh, I stayed in Savannah, Georgia, and then I moved to the city of Atlanta. I stayed uh, on the west side of Atlanta. And then I moved to like the outskirts. So that's where I kind of, you know, been since then. Nice to delve into Memphis a little bit because it's uh, it's been a city that's been on the national radar as of late um, for various reasons. Um, what's it like over there? What do, you, what do you recall up until the age of 12? <clears throat> you know, my childhood, it was pretty uh, it was pretty fun. You know, uh, you know, I stayed in the hood, so I didn't really have a curfew. Or I used to, you know, stay out uh, late at night. Um, across the street and everything like that. It was fun to me. Uh, as of currently, it's bad, man. Um, I had went down there. I was down there maybe like a week ago for uh, Thanksgiving. And, you know, my sister, she was just showing me, you know, everything that's been going on, you know. Uh, the young kids, man, they, um, you know, they're doing like a lot of criminal activities for sport. And, 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 and you know, it's not even because, like, it's too much they're hungry, you know, it is a poverty, you know, uh, city, but it's kind of like, man, they're doing like a lot of criminal activity for, uh, for sport, man. So, yeah. yeah, it's a little scary. I mean, when you have, uh, you know, so many talented young individuals, I mean, because so many great people have come out of that city, you know, from all <laughs> demographics. And then to see, you know, the youth um, involved in certain things that really don't go anywhere, you know, especially when you think the role social media has to play with it and other influences, um, you know, it's, it, it can be very saddening, especially someone like yourself who's from there and is seeing the results of, uh, of what's occurring, you know, w was it similar in Atlanta or what, what, what did you notice was uh, different about Atlanta, um, when you ended up um, moving after 12? Yeah. Um, the city of Atlanta, you know, it was real rough in Savannah, you know, it was kind of rough, but Memphis, man, like it's a different breed out there, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a different breed, you know, you really got to be strong to survive out there. Yeah, I've I've met some great people from over there, but they tell me the same thing, you know, apart from yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's there's a lot of things. I know a lot of gun laws and things that have been enacted now and certain leniencies. And then, you know, with uh, with the climate over there, it's, it's it's very active. So, you know, lucky to still be here, of course. And, you know, we, we wish nothing but the best for that city as a whole because so many talented people, right? Yeah. Um, but when you look at a situation like that, what, what effect – do you think Ifa could have you being now a priest of Ifa? What what effect do you think Ifa could have on those kind of communities, especially for that young man or woman who really doesn't know what they want to do or doesn't have many influences to expose to them what they could be? I mean, what what could Ifa be to our community ultimately? Um, I think you know it can shed a, a a lot of light, you know, on the darkness that's surrounded in that city, man. Um, you know, I think for like the hopeless, the ones who feel like they don't have any hope to, you know, make it out of there, you know, I think if I can give them, you know, a way and give them that roadmap that they need to succeed in life. Um, it is, a, you know, it is, a, um, I think they just passed this gun, uh, this gun law where you don't have to have a permit to even, you know, carry a gun. So, wow. you know, it's people around there, you know, young kids just carrying guns, you know, inside the gas stations and everything like that, you know, just without a care in the world. But, um, yeah, I really think, you know, um, E5 would shed a lot of light, you know, in that city. Yeah, and, and you think about the youth and the hormones that are flowing through the body and, you know, just, um, you know, different mentalities, you know. And you, I think everybody that has been lucky enough to make it past 30 may kind of look at their 18, 20-year-old self and be like, man, what, what was I thinking or what was I doing, you know, so – to have that kind of power to be able to walk around with an instrument like that and, you know, emotions could uh, take place. I mean, you know, it's, it's it can definitely be volatile. And then you think about the people who could become victim to that, you know, and thinking what a amazing Ifa professional they could have been or Odisha professional, you know, and um, just being able to guide all that energy into a positive um, outlet, you know, like Ifa is. And, and you're in an interesting situation because, um, if I recall, you still – reside in Atlanta and um, Atlanta right now is going through a real renaissance period 
when it comes mm-hmm. to Ifa. You know, we, um, we, we interact with people like you, people who are over there. You know, what can you comment on that? Because you being kind of in that epicenter, you know, what are you noticing about the climate of Ifa where you are? <clears throat> Man, it's growing. You know, uh, it's growing, you know, it's growing at a high rate. Um, I think a lot of things that's in, you know, uh, Atlanta and the surrounding cities of Atlanta, um, I think it's becoming more so like a fad almost. But I mean, it is growing. You know, a lot of people are, you know, really interested in the faith. Um, A lot of people are asking me questions, you know, uh, how do I go about, you know, uh, getting into, you know, E5. And, um, you know, you would, when you come to Atlanta, you know, you would see a lot of, you know, the Aleke, the days. Um, and I think majority of, um, majority of Atlanta is more so probably at least 60, 60 to 40, probably, you know, on the Ishe Shea side of things. Now, that's an interesting dynamic because you being um, a black American, Lukumi, Ifa priest initiate, you know, what is that dynamic like for you then at that point, you know, being able to educate people and say, hey, Lukumi does welcome people of all shades and tones and that, you know, how, how has that been as far as like <coughs> orienting and educating people like, hey, we are accepted over here, being that Ishesha is seen as the traditional African practice, how, how have you been able to guide people into Lukumi? Um, you know what, I just tell people, you know, when they ask me uh, that question, I just tell them, you know, wherever, the, you know, their heart leads them to, you know, if it's on the uh, traditional side or if it's on the Afro, Afro, African Lukumi side, um, you know, just whatever your heart, you know, tells you to go to, you know. Um, of course, you know, the Afro Lukumi side, we welcome in all different nationalities and races. So um, it hasn't really, you know, been a big issue, just wherever your heart leads you to. Yeah, I, I second that. That's probably the best advice you can give. Ultimately, no matter... What people hear, they're going to end up where, you know, their heart tells them and, you know, their their spirituality guides them to. Um, when did you first hear about Ifa? Um, okay, so you want me to give you the whole backstory of it? or you know? Yeah, we, got, we have nothing but time, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I went to prison, right? I went to prison um, my last bid long long time ago, maybe like... Um, around 2010 to 2013 and um you know i came from a christian background so you know i get locked up you know I'm, hey jesus you know please let me out i won't do this i won't do that again you know and ultimately man like it just during that time it didn't sit right with me so uh when i got moved from um you know uh, the county jail to uh, the actual prison system um, I started meeting like a whole lot of different, you know, people, different walks of faith and everything like that. And, um, you know, so I started, you know, uh, talking to like Moors, Five Percenters, um, you know, Masons. Um, I can't get too deep into it, you know, um, but I just started talking to those people and, and, and it let me know that, you know, it was more out there other than, um, other than you know, Christianity. So that just, you know, sparked a like interest in me. And I uh and I almost took my shahada. I almost, you know, let somebody convince me to take my shahada, but you know, again, that didn't really, you know, sit well with my spirit. So I just knew that I wanted to go back to, you know, I wanted to go back to you know, what African spirituality was. So boom, fast forward, I get out. Um, and then uh, you know, I meet my wife. And, you know, she's very, uh, very spiritual, you know, she's in astrology and everything like that. So, you know, she kind of puts me on, you know, a few things and she takes me to a psychic for my um, for my birthday. I forgot which one it was. So she takes me to a psychic and, you know, she starts telling me all these things. And uh, of course, I can't remember. But, you know, so that sparked the interest even more. And, you know, I was like, man, like, you know, I just got to find something that's, you know, that's just going to sit right with my, you know, with my soul. And I used to listen to like a lot of Dr. Umar Johnson. And one day, you know, he was talking about his uh, spirituality and what he believes in. And, you know, he said the word Ifa. Ifa, Ifa, Ifa. So I hit him up on um, on the live. And I know he's seen my, uh, my, I know he's seen my message because, you know, 
it was kind of like a you know a long message and you know he was reading it and you know he never answered the question so i ended up um looking up what e5 was and uh kind of you know researched you know on it and i you know i really couldn't i really couldn't you know get anything out of it so let me tell you how you know how how the orishas and the egg goons, you know they play things out for you so my friend he ended up um he ended up you know calling me we're talking you know casual as usual and he tells me yeah you know man i've been going to this um to this botanica in uh, atlanta and it's called uh, i think yeah yeah's botanica in atlanta so we went out there and i ended up gra you know grabbing a book i forgot what book it was um but i ended up grabbing the book took it home and the first page that i read was about Eshu. man i tell you like I got so frustrated because now I'm seeing these names, I'm seeing these words that I, you know, that I don't know what it, you know, know what it means. And I threw the book. I threw the book because like that's how frustrated I got. And I was like, man, like I just need somebody just to, you know, basically introduce me to the faith and guide me. And I left off on issue. And then um, so my wife, she started getting like emails uh on Instagram, you know, of uh Baba Laos, you know, trying to get her to um get into you know e5 you know trying to get her to you know do uh, consultations and everything like that and so you know she didn't really you know budge on it and i think maybe like a while later right my mother-in-law she uh sh she hits us up and she's like hey listen you know such and such does you know uh, he practices e5 he practices e5 and you know he actually only lives down the street from me and so this is a person that we knew you know uh new from the streets and you know so i was kind of skeptical of it because i'm like you know i know where we came from and uh so my wife she went over there you know to uh, get a consultation she came back she loved it so i went over there and i got a consultation and it's kind of been history ever since man oh what a what a tale a couple of things i want to touch on before we delve even deeper into the, the the climax of what you said was you know prison is a is a fascinating thing to the people that haven't been there. And more than likely, it's most fascinating because they haven't gone through that process. I mean, uh, you being somebody who's, you know, come from a certain type of background and gone through that process, what, what's possibly the biggest misconception um, about prison that, that people who haven't gone have? Or maybe, you know, there was an impactful experience apart from the spiritual aspect that I'm like, I really don't want to be here again. You know, is there anything like that? <laughs> Well, one misconception is I think a lot of people think that, you know, when you go to prison, it's a lot of raping going on. It's it's not really like that. You know, if you can go down there and, you know, stay to yourself, don't get involved into, you know, other activities and, you know, kind of have some type of respect, you know, or at least show that you need to be respected. then I think that you can make it far, you know, out the prison system. I think that's the most beautiful thing about our spirituality is that Orumela found talent in people who were going through every situation and came from every background. I mean, you know, some people might look at our spirituality and be like, oh, my God, you know, you're initiating, you know, a convicted felon, you know, someone who did a bid as a priest. You know, what what can be expected from that? And, you know, Orumela stated in the Odu Okanayekum that, you know, to be able to talk about an experience, you have to have experienced it to a certain degree. And, um, you know, someone such as yourself, especially with, you know, the demographic that's coming up and people that we're trying to expose Ifa to, um, who better to speak to them than someone such as yourself, you know? Um, exactly. Yeah, brother. And, and another thing is your, your Christian background, because we've had other people who have converted from Christianity, born Christians into Ifa. You know, what was that response like if, if you were able to even gauge it, you know, maybe by family mm -hmm. or friends like, hey, this was, you know. Mike from Memphis used to go to church, you know, grandma, all these different things. And now I'm a whole African priest of a religion. You know, what was that like? Um, it was kind of tough, man. Um, especially like, you know, a person that I care about a lot. My mom, you know, she's she's heavily, heavily a big Christian. Yeah. So, you know, um, it was hard, you know, kind of getting her to um, to accept it. But, you know, I tell you know, I tell a lot of people, you know, E5 is not a bad thing because they have this misconception of, you know, it's a lot of witchcraft, um, you know, 
you feeding at your belly to the, you know, what should, you know, uh, sacrificing animals and everything like that. And so, you know, they have this big uh, misconception, but, you know, ultimately, man, I tell them like, you know, hey, look, look at me, you know, look how much I've grown and how, you know, how much I've changed. And, you know, when I tell them that, you know, it's really nothing, you know, much more that they can say because I have grown as a person. And um, I remember, man, like one time, <clears throat> Um, so my daughter is crowned, you know, she's all about the lie. Yeah, God um, bless her, yeah. Yeah, she's crowned. So, you know, she had to, she had to cut off her hair. And, you know, my mom, she was very upset with that because my daughter, she had real, real long hair. Yeah. And um, so, you know, eventually it grew back and, you know, she was all smiled and everything like that. And um, I remember one day, like, her teeth fell out. And, you know, I told my mom and she was like, does that got something to do with that religion you believe in? I'm like, oh, <laughs> look now, come on. You know, her, you know, her teeth fell out. It ain't got mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. But, you know, um, you know, we just we just rolling, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was pretty tough. No, it's just misconceptions. And you know, at the end of the day, people like our mothers, they want what's best for us. I mean, even coming from my background, my mother mm -hmm. was pretty terrified of animals, to be frank with you. So the first cleaning we got, mom almost passed out right so you know she with time she became more acclimated to it and you know being from a place like Hialeah even though there's great professionals out there there was also a lot of scamming and things like that back in the 80s and 90s so she's like oh my god you know probably the modern concept of a Baalau now is something that might be seen as prestigious but when you're talking about the 80s and Miami coming from Cuba the Babalawo was somewhat seen as a, a scourge or a scorn upon society, you know? So mm -hmm. her being like, oh, my God, my son wants to not only be a part of this fraternity but grow in it, you know, she was a little scared too because, you know, Miami is what it is. So I, I completely understand. And, and your Odu, we, we've spoken before about it, and, you know, I'm a huge fan of it. And it's interesting you mentioned how close you got to actually uh, practicing Islam because in, in the Odu of Oguna Masa, there's a pataki, that, that's pretty, you know, pretty obscure, um, where actually the Yoruba people actually entered into conflict, um, you know, with, with the Islamic, um, you know, conquering phase that that, that uh, spirituality went through when they were trying to, you know, garner their influence and, you know, um, basically, you know, further that mission of spreading the word. And um, they actually decimated Ife, the scripture says, in the Odu of Ogun Namasa. And um, because of it, Ogun Masa said, you know, that I have to stay close to Ifa because, you know, if we're being, you know, pillaged upon, it didn't seem ethical. And he actually left to the land of Benin or Dahomey, right, where there were other Ifa priests who practiced Fa, um, who some people even debate whether it's a, a father spiritual system to our own, but they're definitely our brothers. And he actually garnered... Um, you know, a following there and created real fraternity there where he was able to create a force that actually went back to Ife to regain um, influence there and reestablish Ifa. So it's interesting how even without possibly knowing that story, you were like, I, I want to go back even further. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's really incredible how Odu plays out. So after you get this first reading, what are what are the steps um, that you take to ultimately get where you are? How is that journey and what, what do you do? <coughs> Uh, so I think maybe like my first or second reading, you know, um, if I told me that, you know, one day that I would become a Baba Lao and at that time, you know, I'm still kind of one foot, you know, in and one foot kind of like in the streets as well. So I'm looking at this person across from me and he's saying all these words that I don't understand. I'm like, listen, ain't no way I'm about to become a Baba Lao. I don't, you know, I don't want to learn none of this stuff, but, you know, essentially me uh gravitating to it you know i began to have a, a real deep love and passion for it because i seen you know the amount of people that can be helped you know with this faith and um you know so i just grew a love and a passion for it and um unfortunately you know with my old ela i am not currently with them i'm in a you know i'm in a different situation right now with the uh, new ela um and you know I just felt like I couldn't be there anymore because, you know, I had I would have been stagnated and, you know, I wouldn't have grown as much as I have, have grown and to not be able to have the resources that I could, you know, as such as yourself, such as other, you know, Baba Laos that, you know, have helped me along my way. So, um, yeah. 
Well, I think I think that's a really important topic to touch on. Is mm-hmm. not everybody that starts the movie is meant to make meant to make it to the to the credits, right? And um, you know, people change, times change. You know, the most important thing is distance over disrespect. I'll never forget. My godfather told me, religious people don't fight. We just stop visiting each other, you know, and and that's okay. Um, Because, you know, people have a right to move on or do different things with different people. Um, You know, the oath and the pact that we make is eternal. Um, We just don't have to stimulate it the same way all the time. The most important thing is that people are in a situation um, where they don't feel stagnant, where they don't feel like they're stuck and they feel like they're being stimulated and groomed towards um certain goals and the crazy thing about it is you might initiate with somebody that that's able to you know perform initiation wonderfully and get great results from it but maybe you have bigger aspirations maybe you want to direct ifas maybe you want to delve into hand of ifas you know sighing whatever it is because back in the day in cuba when you had a, a elder that was limited in the scope of what your goals are you know you you'd basically share the hollow you'd be like hey i have this god brother who's a specialist in what you're trying to do go apprentice with him and you still see that very heavily in africa um mm-hmm. and it's much more streamlined and much more understood in cuba i think we, we became a little more territorial just you know, we're very emotional people and um you know wow. that that's where that comes from so th- i wanted to touch on that because i know there's other people that find themselves in that situation and you know if, if we are at a point where we're realizing our goals differ then you know it's it's okay you know as long as everybody's content and we're able to to work towards our goals i mean um uh, it seems like a really influential guy in, in your journey was eshu and if i recall correctly he's your guardian odisha who you're initiated into yeah. how has that relationship developed from throwing a book across the room um to where you are with him now you know how, how are you with your guardian odisha the biggest thing is patience um yeah. that's the biggest thing you know with eshu um, I think I took, you know, a lot of the characteristics. Um, uh, my, my wife tells me all the time, you know, um, used to be such a, uh, a manipulator. And I'm like, you know, sometimes I don't even realize that I'm doing it, <laughs> but you know, she would tell me that, uh, of course I love my alcohol, you know, mm. I do love my alcohol. Um, uh, of course, you know, uh, in moderation, but, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's been, he's, he's, he's been real, um, He's been a real, you know, uh, help in my life, you know, because I, you know, with Aguna Masai, you know, we have to be careful about impulsiveness. So, yes. you know, with my, you know, with Eshu, you know, and him being my, uh, my wife, Bautori, you know, he has really helped me, you know, with being patient with um, myself, my wife, my family, and just people, you know, in general. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed. Two of my kids are children of Eshu and, um, you know, my, my son, Danny, my daughter, Allison, they've both been on the podcast. And, and the one thing about the children of Eshu is you guys are so likable. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's part of that, you know, quote unquote manipulation, you know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's a natural <laughs> thing with you guys where even without trying, you're likable, you're social, you're well accepted. Like I'll be talking to my daughter and I'll tell her, hey, we can't do that right now. And five minutes later, she'll present it in a way where I'm like, yo, I got caught up in the sauce. You know what I'm saying? So it's, um, it, it's by nature and it, it's really innocent. Um, it's it's just the characteristic of what is in your head. You know, when we talk about that energy, Eshu doesn't know any boundaries. He only mm-hmm. knows how to move forward and results and things like that. So it's beautiful that you've been able to construct that relationship with him because, you know, I'm a huge advocate for Eshu. I think a lot of what I have is, is due to him and the defense he's provided, you know. Mm-hmm. O- Ogunda Masa is, is, like I said, I'm a huge fan of it because – in, in, in your old dude, there's a point I really want to touch on that a lot of people sometimes um, get convoluted, right? You know, there's this big thing, you know, the Bawalawos don't come into trance. Well, in reality, we do, but it's with an energy that really transcend, transcends what we like to think of as trance, where most of the time trance to us is, my name's Joseph, and I just got mounted with a spirit known as Ta Jose, who lived in the Congo a thousand years the Babalawos actually become, you know, mounted or influenced by an energy known as Ela. Mm -hmm. And um, Ogunda Masa was a really uh, talented guy because his consultation process was really unrivaled. But for him to be able to get there, he had to go through some tribulations. And um, he was actually having some difficulties at one point where he's like, you know, I study Odu, I'm analyzing the prophecy. I'm really trying my best to, like, find the correlations. And I think I am, but the client is not satisfied. 
So he visited another group of Bawalawos for divination where his own Odu of Ogun Nasa was revealed, where Ifa said that he needed to learn how to manifest the ancestral energy of Orumila, which is Orumiela or Ela, right? Which is actually a word that's found across many, you know, religions from an ancient standpoint. The word Ela can seen in, you know, uh, Islam scripture, you know, old uh, Hebrew, you know, etc., and um, in Ogun Masa is actually where the verse to invoke Allah to descend upon the minds of the Baalaos first manifested. And when they did that, you know, they started killing it. I mean, you know, the clients were super satisfied. They were making a real difference in the community. I mean, how much, how important is it for you to be able to have, you know, you being somebody that takes on clientele and is growing on a daily basis, how important is it for you to have that moment to be able to kind of meditate and prepare yourself, or wh what is your process before a consult, you know, in line with what your old do says? Uh, so I like to burn like some incense, uh, you know, to and to cry to kind of create that energy. Um, I like to just sit and you know, kind of just meditate because at an early stage, you know, I was getting nervous. Um, everybody does, it, yeah, it's, it's yeah. terrifying, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was getting uh nervous and I would, um, and I will always question myself, like, hmm, you know, I wanted that, you know, this client understand the reading. Um, I wanted, you know, was I able to help them? And, you know, anybody can, you know, start spitting out, you know, verses of Odu. But I think the key point is, you know, trying to find that solution to help yes, them. Sir. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember um, so a while back, you know, we were doing a Mono de Arula in my ELA now. And, um, you know, so, you know, the youngest, they go first. You know, sure. they go first. And um, so, you know, hey, I don't know all, you know, all 256 Odu. So I'm looking on the phone, trying to, you know, come up with things, you know, like to say and trying to, you know, interpret it, you know, right on the spot. And, uh, you know, so I'm nervous. I'm sweating. And, you know, I'm just like, man, you know, I hope this message is, you know, trying to, you know, uh, will reach them. And uh, so the elder, you know, the elders, they pulled me to the side and they was like, hey, listen, man, you know, um, put the phone down or, you know, and just read, you know, just grab a couple things and just read, you know, say what's on your heart. Those eggs, you know, a lot, you know, they're going to guide you on, you know, what to say. Yeah. So I'm still kind of nervous, but you know, the next, um, the next Alejo, when they come in, you know, I did exactly what they said. And man, I tell you, I was just boom, 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 boom. And, you know, like they were pretty proud of me. So, you know, that kind of made me feel good, you know, and those are, you know, key people and key elders, you know, that uh, I appreciate that, you know, for helping me along my way. Well, yeah, you have a natural gift for that. I mean, and your Odu is where the inspiration necessarily was born and, you know, the creation of the energy. And, you know, it's undeniable for anyone who's ever been in an Ita, there's like something floating in the air. You know, mm -hmm. the air is thick, you know, in, in the best way possible. It's not suffocating, but you do feel, you know, uh, surrounded, right? And that, that's what Elah is. It's this ambiance. It's this cloud. It's whatever you want to, you know, interpret it as. But the interpretation is in that Odu. And, you know, it, it serves all of us because, you know, even if somebody per se knows something from each sign, um, every now and again, by the grace of God, when we're kind of like, okay, what do I say next? Something pops up and it's like, okay, I, I made a, I was worth the, uh, the cost of the consult today, you know, so <laughs> right. it's, uh, it's, it's in praise to that Odu, you know, and now you, I'm, I'm not sure what your trajectory has been, but maybe you probably had relationships before your, uh, current significant other. How important has it been to be with somebody that, um, is initiated and fully supports your priesthood and your, and your practice? Oh man, it's, it's very important, especially, you know, with my Odu of Muna Masa, which is, you know, it speaks of the unity with uh, Ogun and Ochoci. Oh, yes. um, so, you know, I have to move in unison with anybody that I'm with, whether it's in a business relationship, uh, 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 spiritual relationship, you know. Um, so anybody that's probably, you know, how can I put this? Probably, you know, that believes in another faith, it, it probably won't work out. You know, I'm just being honest, you know. Like I say, I, I, you know, I have to have unity in anything that I do, um, which is which has been a blessing because, you know, my wife, you know, she has been, you know, uh, a key person into helping me with this faith as well. You know, uh, the things that I don't see, she sees and the things that I see, she doesn't see. So, you know, we kind of go hand in hand, you know. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's fabulous. And that's what you hear from a lot of the brothers is, you know, I, I didn't know what a relationship was until I found my other half, the APDB, um, who is supportive, who is understanding. Because, you know, our job is a, is a difficult one. You know, we're out late hours, we're traveling. You know, this isn't something that, um, you know, I would say even most women are going to be able to understand or tolerate. So this special class of women that, that we appreciate greatly. Um, your Odu is one that, gets cited a lot you know it's one of those very popular ones where it says you know united we stand you know with union we have force i i think i'd like to ask you you know what is your current um you know interpretation or, or thoughts on you know the division that may be happening within ifa possibly sheshe lukumi and how your odu really really motivates us towards the opposite but we're, we're not seeing it as quickly as we'd like to uh, you know how important do you think it is to apply your sign in that regard and what are some of the obstacles that you think we could overcome to be able to actually unify as you know two clans well i mean i think first and foremost you know um if is one you know Gosh, yeah, yeah you know it may be a little you know tweaks and things of you know here and there with the shay shay and afro look me um, but again, like if I is one, um, I feel like a lot of ego is in there as well, you know, uh, to I think we think, you know, hey, this is right. You know, what I'm doing is right and that is wrong. But it's, you know, it's it's not so much of a di division even between Isheshe and, you know, Afro, Afro uh, Lukami. It's a division, you know, within Africa, when Af African Lukami as well, you know, with different houses. So, yeah. um you know, it's just all about, you know, coming together and, you know, putting the pride to the side. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I don't like to get too controversial with that. <laughs> no, but it's like your old dude says, united we stand, you know, and, and we see, it's like you say, Ifa is one. And all these concepts are within your sign. And, you know, for us to be, you know, and have this division, it, ultimately it hinders us. It, it's counterproductive yeah. because you think about how much information we could exchange how how we could come to different conclusions, better conclusions, you know, the grammar, all of these things that could better our practice, give us better results. But, you know, it's 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 just a matter of getting over the ego, like you say, right. which is probably the biggest obstacle to humans in general. So now how how many kids have you been blessed with, brother? I forget. Three. Oh, oh girl. Oh my God. God help us, man. Oh girl, man. Uh, what's what's being a girl dad like before we get into the next part? <sighs> Being a girl dad. Um, it's different. <laughs> man, um, it's hard, you know, because I'm the only man in the house. Oh, man. So, uh, you know, everybody's kind of like pulling for me, you know, because I'm I'm the balance that they need in life. Um, yes. And, um, yeah, it's hard because I'm overprotective a lot. You know, the world is uh, pretty crazy. So, you know, um, it's hard, man. Right. You, you really are Orula in person, in my opinion, because, you know, Rumila was the one man in a house full of women. I still got mm -hmm. my boys living with me, so it's a blessing. You know, it kind of a little bit more testosterone. You know, I'm able to survive. We're able to kind of maneuver. Yeah. But, um, you know, when you have something as precious as a woman, like what Ifa says they are, they are precious, you know, whether it's our mothers, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, and uh, to know what, you know, uh, what we do to protect them. And, you know, especially, you know, you've seen the best and worst of, you know, society having gone through prison and, you know, leading a civilian life now and being able to compare, you, you know exactly what you need to protect them from. So uh, that, that makes perfect sense because I find myself in the same, uh, in the same situation with mine. And th that question really leads into this one is that, you know, how satisfying has it been to be able to impart this culture upon your girls, you know, and, and show them this is who we are, this is what we believe in, this is where our ancestors come from, you know, how how positive has that been and how do you think that's going to benefit them? So, okay, so my last two, um, my last two girls, one is crowned and one has a um, monodera ruler. Nice. Uh, one is Olova Batala and then one is Onishango. Nice. Um, my first one, She's real intrigued, you know, when she comes over and she sees all the Orishas, you know, and she's like, Daddy, you know, what's uh, what's Aubrey doing? You know, why she's, you know, putting that, you know, offering, you know, to the Orishas. So uh, she's real intrigued about it. Um, I'm kind of glad that I caught them at an early age because, you know, yeah. uh, the Orishas and, you know, Ifa, it, it helps me uh, 
it helps me to navigate, you know, how to uh, operate with their li uh, with their life. Um, and so, you know, uh, me, me and my wife, unfortunately, you know, I was what about 29 or 30, you know, when I got into this space. So, you know, we're kind of playing catch up and trying to, you know, uh, correct the things that we need with our uh, destiny. But uh, yeah, it's been real helpful, you know, uh, getting them, getting them in this uh, faith in the earth at an early age. Well, definitely, man. It's the greatest legacy we're going to leave our children is culture and identity. You know, especially when we see so many people in the world who really don't know who they are, where they come from. It, it, it can, I can imagine, be a very, you know, an experience with a lot of solitude, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the most beautiful thing to give those girls an identity, have that strong, you know, masculine father figure in the house like you are and, uh, you know, be able to impart that on them so they know who they are and they know their values and what they stand for. So this is a huge success and accomplishment, man. Mm -hmm. Um What's next for Michael Gundamasa, brother? What do you got going on? Um, right now, you know, just growing, man, studying um, and correcting a lot of things that need to be corrected in my spiritual path, man. Um, that's that's pretty much what I have going on right now. Beautiful, beautiful. And where do you see Ifar going, brother? I mean, you, you know, at the end of the day, if, if we didn't receive it at nine days old, we're, we're all late, you know. But you having been... Um, you know, seeing the culture, we're really in a really interesting time because, you know, it's it's a renaissance period, especially where you are. You know, Florida's always kind of been on, you know, on the IFA the tip, you know, for whether it be Tampa, Miami, you know, moving up and further. But, you know, when you talk about Atlanta, really, you know, I just realized this today. I didn't know one of the only Nigerian consulates in the country is actually, you know, right next to you guys. So a huge influx there. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you see your community where you are going forward, you know, possibly within the next 10 years? Uh, again, like I say, I think it's, it's I think Ifa is uh, going to be, you know, one of the top, so to say, religions, uh, if that's what you want to call it, you know, because, um, again, if you if you come to Atlanta, you know, again, you you will see a lot of your uh, a lot of your days, you know, um, you will see a lot of things that's tied into with E5. Um, and then also, I think uh, as far as religion wise, a lot of people are, you know, moving away from what our grandmothers and mothers, you know, kind of like pushed on us as far as religion. So, you know, I think a lot of people are more open to, you know, uh, what else is out there. You know, I'm not going to, you know, just say, you know, even if it's tied in with uh, to E5, but I feel like a lot of people are, you know, beginning to be more conscious, you know, of uh, other like spiritualities and faith. I love that. The ancestral knowledge, whether it's Ifa, because everything is within Ifa, but not everything is Ifa. You know, you, you may have, um, for example, there's old dudes that speak of, you know, yoga, but we might not still have all that information as opposed to the people who, you know, have actually dedicated their lives towards preserving it. So even though it's not necessarily Ifa, it's still within Ifa. You know, it's like Orumila said, wherever there's logic and good intentions and love is, is where I'll be. And, um, you know, we see that whether it's in, in so many different spiritualities, you know. Mm -hmm. um, any final words for our, our community, Mike? You know, um, you know your, your information is going to be in the uh in the description you know people are going to be hitting you up left and right you know any words for those that uh, might try to get in contact with you or the our roots community at large or if there's anything you want to mention in general brother uh yeah uh so i don't think phil took my um ig but uh if you want to um find me on ig you can find me at uh, baba b-a-b-a -B -A, ogunda o-g-u-n-d-a masa m-a-s-a uh, and the thing, you know, I just want to leave with was uh, people that's trying to get in this faith, you know, um, I say take it slow, you know, um, find the right people to, you know, get with that will be able to help you and cultivate, you know, uh, and have you spiritually grow within your path. And, you know, uh, don't be a rush into this, you know, it's a uh, it's a lifelong process. And um, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Mike, I love the shirt. Before we get into some closing comments, could you lean back a little bit? I see the word temple. I, I want to see what's. Oh on yeah. There. So hey, this right. So, yeah. So this right here is my um is my brother in Chicago. You know, nice. um, Victor Guzman, uh, Obesa, 
Nice. He's, a, uh, he's a real knowledgeable Bible Lao. Uh, nice. So if you ever out there in Chicago, you know, hit him up. Um, Definitely. Yeah. No, that's a that's a nice shirt, man. Bless. Yeah. yeah. So Mike, um, couple words for you, brother. Um, I, I feel like someone such as yourself is exactly what Orumila has needed. You are somebody who has had experiences, someone who has grown from them, and is able to guide others towards a greater future like you're guiding yourself and your family towards, brother. So from one brother to another, it's always been a pleasure to interact. I, I appreciate you just as much as our community does for being on. And, uh, you know, can't wait for further interactions and just to see more and more prosperity and progress on your behalf, brother. Hey, no, nah, man, listen, I appreciate you, man. I know all your followers, you know, they appreciate you, man. And you're really doing your thing. And I wish you would have kept Phil's face out the camera, you know, because that was a oh, real big mistake. Oh, man, he's got man. problems. His phone's number's out there, too. He's done for. His wife oh, my, like, What's oh going my gosh. The last, on, episode with, the last episode with Freddie. <laughs> Yo, I had people <laughs> blow me up. Your like wife midnight. is like, what do you got going on over there at the studio with that guy? <laughs> it was great. Hey, you want some shout outs? Yeah, let's get some elevator music. Man. All Come right. On. <laughs> All right, folks. These are the shout outs for the VIP super fans of the channel. If you are not a member, we have uh, extra perks, extra episodes, live shows, uh, discounts on the website. So make sure you go to the YouTube channel and just click on the join button. It's, real, it's like two seconds. That's all it takes. So let's give shout outs to the VIPs. We got Juju Ogunda Yakun. Juju, thank you. We got Koki Fury. They upgraded to VIP. Upgrade. Shout out to Koki. We got Lulu Sprandell. This is their ninth month. Lulu, you're killing it. Thank you. Junior Nanez. Junior, bendicione. Alexa De Vivero. Thank you, Alexa. And let's give some shout outs to the super fans here. We got o Ogun B. Ogun B, which blessing. Is nine months. Boru, yeah, he's, uh, he's been in for a while. Yep. Yeah, oh. Gilly 84. You're my elevator music back. I yeah, know, that's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got uh, Carolyn Munez. Carolyn, thank and you. And Trinity Young. Trinity, shout out to Trinity. Yeah. Guys, couple closing thoughts after this great episode. BotanicaCandlesandMore.com is up and running for all your spiritual needs. Um, Joe, this camera. Oh, where are we at? We over here? Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? I love looking off into the distance. It makes us <laughs> it makes us more philosophical and mysterious, right? Um, the audio podcast is available. I'm, I'm sure it's progressed quite a bit since our last recording. Um, you know, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. You know, let somebody know about the membership program. But always, until next time, see the light.